And joining us now is former Israeli ambassador to the United Kingdom, Mark Regev, who is now a top advisor to Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. We've been talking about this and now finally a deal. What do we know about the health of the hostages? Not enough, I'm afraid. Uh, as you know, there have not been Red Cross visits until now. And so except for some intelligence that we have, uh, we, we can't be sure. And uh, uh, so we'll see for the first time tomorrow, as your reporter correctly said, uh, one of the first things we'll have them do when they return is, is very, very, very comprehensive medical examinations. Uh, who knows how these people have been living over the last uh, 50 days uh, since, uh, since they were abducted? Uh, who knows what they experienced and what they went through on October 7th? especially as we're expecting to get a group of, of children, some of them very, very young, some of them at a very tender age. Uh, uh, of course, we have to be very careful and, and make sure that they get any care that they need and they get that immediately. What would Israel consider a violation of the deal? Uh, because there's so little trust. These are two enemies uh, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> you know, there, there is no confidence between the two parties. So what would be a violation? There could be a lone actor, there could be a Palestinian Islamic Jihad, or frankly, a militant on either side trying to wreck the agreement. Um, so no one, which, no one on our side is going to try to wreck the agreement. Let's be clear about that. But, but let's, the basis of the agreement is that there's a cessation, a pause in the violence uh, uh, for the duration of those four days that has been agreed to. And uh, uh, Hamas uh, has, in committed itself to that. And if that is violated, that's a major problem. And of course, uh, they have committed to release uh, 50 people. And that is their commitment. That is their obligation. And that's what we're expecting. How do you ensure that the 150 Palestinians that are eventually going to be released if this continues, how can you be sure that there won't be someone like the mastermind of October 7th, who reportedly uh, was one of the thousand people exchanged for Gilad in 2011. So you're 100 percent correct. There's always a danger that a security prisoner who is released will return to terrorism. That's always a danger. So what we've done in, in this case is we've had to manage risks because there's not a perfect solution. I mean, we want them all out. We want all 200 and 40 hostages released and that's obviously unfortunately not going to happen at first so we're doing it stage by stage we're starting with this group of 50. Uh, uh, the people being released uh, i want to uh, there was a condition of the israeli government we're not releasing people who are guilty of murder murder themselves where maybe they tried to kill people but they didn't actually succeed uh, and so we we've drawn the line there uh, where people have thrown bombs people who have shot people who have stabbed but they didn't actually kill anyone and so people as we say i don't know if it translates well into english but in hebrew you say people with blood on their hands are not being released but we are aware that in the past people who have been released in these sorts of deals have returned to terrorism and we're very as i say we know that can happen but if there is an opportunity to bring our people home and to bring home 50 people including the children that is for us a major objective, and we think if we manage the different options we have, this is the right option. As you point out, it did happen with Khalid Shalit uh, back then. The debate within the cabinet took some nine hours yesterday, cabinet, the war cabinet. And the national security minister, Irma ben Gavir, was against this. Um, how do you get past those kinds of divisions? So uh, we have a parliamentary system in Israel, like in Britain, like in Germany, and uh, so there's a vote in the cabinet, and the overwhelming majority of ministers supported the prime minister's proposal. There was a minority, a, a small group of ministers, uh, who, who disagreed, but in, in our system of government, so there's a vote in the cabinet, that is a government decision, and that, that obliges uh, the minority who voted against it. Uh, we have the cabinet responsibility. That's our system and that's how it works. And of course, uh, you know, there are powerful arguments saying that you've given Hamas uh, a, a time to rest, to regroup, to prepare for the next round of fighting. We do know that they only agreed to the ceasefire. I mean, Andrea, to be frank, they didn't suddenly become humanitarians. Uh, uh, on the contrary, they are brutal uh, uh, terrorists. We saw the horrific violence they did on October 7th. 
we know exactly who we're dealing with we've got no illusions who who kidnaps babies uh, the, one of the people we hope to see tomorrow uh, uh, was nine months old when he was kidnapped he's now 10 months old just think of this andrew he became a hostage before he could talk or walk what sort of people do that sort of thing i mean it really is a disgusting and depraved behavior so we know who we're dealing with we've got no illusions whatsoever we just want to see our people back uh, that's the most important thing after that when this cessation of, of of conflict is behind us we will proceed to deliver blows against hamas until we until we've ended their rule over gaza there are uh, credible reports that u.s officials are concerned about some of the extremist settlers in the west bank which could precipitate a second front uh, against israel um, i've seen video of the takedown, the bulldozing of the Arafat statue. Um, is Israel doing enough to restrain the passions of the settlers and others in the West Bank? So our goal is to concentrate on the South, on Gaza. Uh, we want victory there. And we want to think, keep things as quiet as possible in the North on the Lebanese frontier, though that's difficult with the way Hezbollah is behaving. And in the West Bank as well, we want to keep things relatively quiet, as quiet as possible. And what we've been doing is Hamas has terror cells across the West Bank, and we've been preempting because we know that the Hamas activists in the West Bank, they want to try to do atrocities. They want to try to cause a major explosion of violence. That's their goal. And so we've been preempting them, and, and in doing that, we've taken out and arrested uh, a whole uh, series of, of dangerous actors. Uh, as to Israeli vigilante activity, my prime minister spoke very forcefully about that just a few days ago. Any vigilante activity is unacceptable and we will root it out.